Let's turn this photo into a clean game day sports graphic in Photoshop. So let's start by dragging in the photo. I want the subjects to take up a good bit of the canvas. I'm just gonna leave some room at the top so we can kind of have our text hovering above. And to start, I'm gonna select the subject. So if you hit W for your quick selection tool, select subject should pop up on that top toolbar. And so we've got our selection here. Obviously it's included this referee. So I'm gonna deselect the referee just by switching the quick selection selection tool to the lasso tool, holding option to do the negative selection, and then clicking and dragging around the ref to basically deselect all of these marching ants. Let's go up to select and mask and just do some quick adjustments to the selection. I always like to turn on smart radius, does a pretty good job of finding the edges. I typically smooth things out and up the contrast and then bring down the edge a little bit as well. So we can output this to a layer mask, hit okay. And now let's duplicate this layer so we don't lose the entire background, command J is a shortcut. And then on this bottom layer, I'm just gonna delete this mask. So what we're left with is the initial photo and a layer that is just the cutout. Now we're gonna remove these players from the photo. And to do that, let's turn off this cutout layer and just keep our photo layer on. If you hold command and click on the mask here, that is the selection we just made. So now we can go up to select, modify, and then expand to bring this selection outward. Let's do 10 pixels just to be safe. So now we have a slightly bigger selection and we're just gonna look to fill this space. So I'm gonna right click in here with the quick selection tool selected and go to generative fill. And I'm just gonna click generate. We're not trying to generate anything new. We're just trying to remove these subjects. You can click through your generative fill options, you know, this is gonna be covered up by our cutout, so it doesn't matter too much, but let's go with this option. And so now I'm gonna merge this generative fill layer with the background layer and just duplicate these two layers by selecting both with shift, command J to duplicate, and then command E, or you can right click and go to merge layers for merging. And I'm just gonna hide these. These are just kind of our, our backup layers we can always go back to. And then this is our full background layer. So I can rename this background I'll name this one cutout. So now we have our background layer, we have the cutout layer. And with the background, let's convert this for smart filters. And I'm gonna add a blur to this. We can turn our cutout layer back on. But let's go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this is where we're gonna get the, the bulk of this effect. Radius is gonna depend on your canvas size. Right now we're working with a 1080 by 1440 canvas and eight pixels looks pretty good. Now, if we're trying to make this blur look like it was taken in camera and it's just doing the background blur from the focus point of the subject, Objects, this foreground wouldn't be completely blurred out. It would really just be the background. So to get rid of this blur at the bottom, I'm gonna go into this mask that it's created with smart filters on the Gaussian blur. And if you just click your gradient tool, you can go to your basics and just have a black to transparent gradient selected. This should be the default if your foreground color is set to black. And now we can just click and drag from the bottom upward to get this gradual fade and we can drag this gradient point. So we're getting the grass a little bit more in focus on like the focal plane that the subjects are jumping from. Let's make our main text now. So I'm gonna make a new layer, T for the type tool. And I'm just gonna click once, game day will type out. And for the day text, I'm gonna blow this up so it's the same width as game. And we can bring these closer together just in the character panel, reducing the space between lines. So something like this, and we can blow this up. We're going to put this text behind the cutout layer. So between the cutout and the background. So we have our cutout going in front. And I'm just going to center this by hitting command A to select the whole screen and center justifying with the move tool selected. This toolbar up here is how you align things. So that's horizontal center. And I'm just bringing up my grids here. Command apostrophe is a shortcut. And I want to keep keep like a pretty consistent margin both on top and bottom. So let's start with this like four box margin on top. And then when we add some text to the bottom, we have that as a reference point. I'm gonna add this sort of little frame to the game day text. I'm gonna make a new layer and go to my shape tool. We'll do the rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna draw out like this little skinny rectangle, command J to duplicate it, and then command T to transform it. We'll rotate it, flip it around and just line it up like so. We'll group these rectangles together and call it corner. And I'm just gonna line this up so it's exactly even with the text. And then with the arrow keys, holding shift, I'm gonna go left, up, left, up, left, up, three times. And then I'm gonna duplicate this folder, call it corner two, and command T to transform again. We're gonna rotate this one around 
and put this in the bottom right. So again, lining it up so it's at the very edge of the text, and then one, two, three. Now we can group these corners with the game day text and call it title text. And again, bringing up the grids, let's keep a three box margin from the top. And now at the bottom, let's type out some smaller text. So again, new layer, T for the type tool. We'll type out Minnesota wind chill game day. And this font will do 16 point font, real tiny. And I'm gonna spread this out. So let's see if we can match the exact width as the game day text. That's close, a little bit less spacing. And I'm gonna drag this layer down so we have that same three box margin that we have on top, on bottom as well. So three boxes would position it right about there. Last bit of text we're gonna add is the game information. We'll do that in front of the game day text. So let's go into our title text folder, make a new layer. I'm gonna create a black rectangle to kind of house our game description text. And I'm going to make it span this full width. Let's drag it down so it's kind of in the middle. And I think I drag it all the way out to the E and just line it up with the left edge too. Let's take our tiny Minnesota windchill game day text, duplicate it. I'm going to drag this into our title text folder just for organizational purposes. Drop the spacing back down to zero, drag it up. And so now we have our black rectangle text. Let's type out the matchup, Boston versus Minnesota, and then we'll hit a couple spaces, 7 p.m., a couple more spaces, see foam stadium. Kind of your default game information, matchup, time, where it's taking place. And now I want some sort of divider between these elements. There's a font called Zap Dingbats. Now if you type the letter H, and I don't know if everyone has this font, but I had it by default, and then switch the font to Zap Dingbats Regular. It will create this star if it's a capital H. And we could shrink the font of the star maybe down to 13, 12 point font and upping the baseline so it's more centered on our text, something like this. And then we could just copy this star and also drop it in between those first two elements. I'm gonna blow this whole thing up so it's a little bit more legible. Command T to transform. And let's just make it fit the full width of this box. We can even center it directly on this box by holding command, clicking this layer thumbnail of the rectangle, and then center justifying both horizontally and vertically. Now the other thing we can do from a photo editing standpoint is create a little bit more separation by using gradients. So let's collapse this folder and make a new layer on top of the background. Go to your gradient tool, G is the shortcut, and again with a black to transparent gradient, black foreground color. Let's just click and drag up from the bottom to just give this text a little bit darker of a background and also separate out the subjects, make it feel like they're popping off the poster. And let's do the same thing, make a new layer. We'll do it from the top this time. Again, clicking and dragging and just kind of like darkening the crowd that is more distant. It was a pretty slow, gradual fade. I don't want to go overboard. But again, just creating some separation between the subjects, the background, and the text. So that is our composition. Now we're going to finish everything off by taking this whole poster into Camera Raw Filter and doing some final color adjustments as well as playing with the lighting a bit. So I'm gonna stamp this whole thing onto its own layer by making a new layer. Command Option Shift E is a shortcut to apply the image as we're looking at it to its own layer. Then we can go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And now we'll just make a few adjustments here. We do wanna up the exposure a little bit. We could play with the contrast. This is really gonna be up to you and wherever your creativity takes you. But I think I like these settings for the lighting. For the color, I do wanna shift things maybe a little bit towards the blue and then bringing in some magenta as well. And if we saturate the whole thing, that kind of pops the overall color, which I like. We can go to your effects and bring in some texture and clarity too as well as some dehazing for some more contrast and more saturation. And then vignetting, I do wanna bring this down to kind of keep the focus very central. And grain is gonna be key here too, because I do think to sell this like in-camera blur, the whole thing has to have the same photo edit done to it. And grain is just a good way to keep that consistent wash over the whole image. So I like 35 there. Let's also bring up the black point in the curves layer. So I'm gonna just click a few points here and bring the bottom one up. Kind of give it this matte finish. We can even see if we wanna pop out the highlights a little bit more. And then let's go into our final color adjustments, going to the color mixer. 
I feel like the skin tones are pretty orange right now, so I wanna shift those more towards a red and probably desaturate them. I like the blues, the way those are popping off the jersey, but I don't think we need as much pop on the skin tones. Maybe we could boost the luminance as well. We can also play with the blues and make it more like, more accurate to the team color. I don't have it pulled up right now, but you could compare it directly to a swatch of the accurate team color and just make sure you're shifting it accordingly. I do kind of like this more teal look, even if it's not fully accurate to their color. So let's click OK. That is our final edit for this Minnesota Winchell game day poster. Real easy to do the same process with really any sports photo that has like subjects isolated on a background. Generative fill is a great way to separate out the subject from the background and create that artificial blur. Now, if the photographer, myself, was using a a better lens or if the subjects were closer to me we would have had that blur built in more naturally but this is a great way to kind of simulate the effect of like a pro sports photo look and also give it some stylization adding some text really build it into a more well-rounded design as always let me know if you have any questions thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one